Skull. What's up, YouTube? Over this past weekend, I got to work in the Vancouver Film School production of Shield Maiden. I got to act in it, do stunts in it, I even made an axe for it. Uh, this axe, actually. And I thought that it turned out so nice, I would show you guys how I put it together. So I hope you enjoy it, and, uh, keep on... Keep on raiding? Um... I grabbed a piece of hemlock for this project. Uh, just because it was the only one I found that would fit my needs. Just underneath my armpit was my length. It worked out good. Here I'm using a draw knife. I sh started really shallow with the draw knife so I don't split the wood and then widened it a bit until I got both sides of it pretty good. Then I sanded it down as best I could. Once all the sanding was done, it was time to give it a little bit of battle damage. I Really, the axe that I'm using here isn't for a show, I just thought that was probably the best option for doing some battle damage to it. I marked which side was the front of the axe, so it would have more to battle damage, and which side was the top. And then I did some hammering and some more axing, and then I scraped it a bit with the axe. Worked out pretty good, then moved on to staining it. I made a bit of a mess. Levi will probably have something to say about the brown splotch on the wall, unless I clean it up real quick, which is unlikely. So, moving on, I torched it a bit. Torching wood always makes it look pretty cool. Then I drew my rough axe head with the idea that I wanted to wrap all the way around the hemlock. So I tested it, you know, it's a little too big. So I cut it down, and that'll be about right. Then I take a pencil and mark where I'm going to notch the wood. I'm going to notch the wood so when I'm swinging this axe around or smashing into stuff, it has a more life to it for not falling off the end of the uh, wood there. And then I'm going to do a bunch of notches with a jigsaw in order to use my makeshift chisel to uh, knock the notch out. Worked out pretty good. After I've knocked all the bits out, I sand it down and move on to doing a quick stain so the bare wood doesn't show when I glue my piece onto it. Oh, and before that, I rub it down with a cloth and then use some tape on it to try and like just pull any little bits off of the wood so it's nice and clear for gluing. So with the leather, I use a 12 ounce leather and it, don't worry about making it perfect because we're going to sand it. And then I test to see if it fits the notch. It doesn't, so I shave a little bit off of the leather and then it fits and I'm good. Then I stain it just to make sure none of that shows when I wrap the head around it. Then I dye it. And for some reason, I dye the back of this. I can't remember what I was thinking. I think I, there was a part of it that I wanted to dye black. The same idea as staining the notch that I didn't want it to show, but uh, whatever. It worked out anyways. A little barge cement on both. It uh, keeps its tackiness for a while, so I wasn't too worried about leaving the uh, shaft lying around for a bit. A couple clamps and then I take it over to the anvil to give it a good hammer make sure the glue is set in there really well also gives it a bit of a hammered look to it which isn't bad now I'm gonna get rid of the excess, the majority of the excess and then take it over to the sander to make everything flush which goes pretty quick. Now when you do this you're going to have a bit of um, bit, some bits hanging off the edge of your leather. So you're going to probably want to bevel it. Um, I just use the absolute smallest size beveler I have and go around all the edges. Once that's done I use a larger beveler on the uh, blade part. The edge. And then I give it a little sand as well to make it smoother. And 
And then I hammer the edge to bevel it. I'll put some dye on it and hammer it again. The uh, wetness from the dye lets it shape a little better. So I, I could use water, but whatever. It, this worked out fine. I wasn't going for any insane edge on it. Then I just use a variety of tools to mess up the surface to give it some kind of life or history, you could say. Then I punch some holes in it to tie it to the wood. I saw Ross do this on a smaller axe and it looked great. I think I would conceal the lace a little better next time maybe, but for now it's uh, it works out okay. Glue the head on and then we're going to tape it up and spray bomb the hell out of it. I used some uh, hammered bronze and I used some uh, rust oxide and a clear coat in the end. So I experimented a bit with the different hammered bronze. I had an oiled bronze and a regular bronze if, I, if I'm correct. Then I hit it with the rust oxide, experiment with how I put it on. I really try and get it to splatter on. I don't want to just spray it on. Um, then after that I let it dry significantly and then I clear coat it. Just adds a little longevity to it. Then I cut a very thin strip of leather for tying the head on and when I put it through, after I put it through, I go the opposite direction with the lace, so I, I'm pulling the head together and cinching it onto the wood. When that's done, I just wrap it around a few times and tie it off. So here I am, I'm pulling it together, give it a good pull, still pulling, alright, and then I tie it off. Cut those little ends off and then I do the same to the top. Once that's done all that's left is to put the little end leather bit on it that I threw on the other axe. just wrap it with a piece of leather and put some a furniture tax upholstery tax in it I owe Levi of drawbridge props and armory eight furniture tax if he's watching this video they turned out pretty good I cut them shorter because they were pretty long but uh, it worked out I was thinking of doing a longer leather wrap all the way up the uh, wood but decided just to go with a little butt part there and there you have it Done. That's that's about the end. That's the end of the video. Move along.